So one thing with um, the motor that goes on here is that you've got to think about all these cables. Now, there isn't a lot of room underneath the motor. Um, so if you have something that protrudes quite a lot in terms of the, the runs for the cable, you're going to have to consider um, what you're going to do there. Now, I've seen people Dremel it down. So uh, we do have a Dremel in the library if you want to borrow it um, and, and sand it down to try and keep everything in place, but make this bottom bracket thinner. Now mine happens to be quite thin, so I might get away with the motor and the bracket that holds the motor on, managing to get around all this. And I'm hoping that'll be the case. Um, but that's something to consider when you're, when you're buying the kit, do you have the clearance at the bottom? And if you don't, is there something you can do about it? So I'm now going to look at offering up this kit. Now this kit does come with some spacers and some other ancillaries, depending on the size of this. You do have to make sure that your bottom bracket is the right width uh, for this kit. Um, so it tells you what the minimum and maximum this bottom bracket can be. Um, so it's worth checking out if this kit will fit your bike. Now I've got a vernier gauge you can put on there, a digital vernier gauge, which will tell you the distance. So you can borrow that before you even think about buying this kit to make sure it is, or you can just measure it and get an approximation. So we'll undo this. Uh, looks like we've got to take a bracket off there. It's got spaces on it already. And I know there's more spaces in the kit. And then we're going to slot this into there. Okay, so I've taken all these components off the motor, um, which will enable me to start it. That's the, this, oops, that's the stabilizing bracket. Um, and then the other components are for um, attaching the motor. Um, there's a couple of spaces there. We, you do have a couple of spares in the kit as well, depending on how much spacing you're going to need. Now I have taken this bottom assembly for the, the cables off the bottom because it is too, it is too thick. I mean, I thought that was quite thin. Um, I did have a look at it when I first bought this kit. But it does appear that it, it's still too fat. Now a lot of it's to do with that screw. Um, but I think what I'm going to have to do is flatten that out somehow. There's quite a lot to play with on that. I think I can still use it. Um, but what I'll do is I'll reattach it to the bike. And then I'll get the Dremel and just go over it. The reason it's, it's struggling to go on because... There's enough clearance in between um, to get it in, but it's just the front bracket. There's a bracket on the front. I wonder if I could take that off. Now it says warranty void if removed, but if I if I if I undo those four screws and took that off, I'd then be able to slide it on without doing any adjustments to that. Hmm. Something to consider. So I decided to take the cover off. So I know that it says warranty void, but it does give me a lot more clearance uh, through that gap to actually slide it on uh, because the bracket that holds it all in place has a raised bracket. And I think that might give me enough clearance. Um, so I've screwed this back on. Let's just see if I can get it in place so it's just about on there but it's still fouling the screw head of that bottom bracket so what I'll do is I'll take this off and we'll just get the Dremel on that just as so we can still use the screw but it just takes the the top off and then this should allow the motor to slide into position So uh, this is available in the library, um, it's like a Dremel, uh, but it's um, basically got this uh, sanding wheel, uh, so I'm going to have a go at sanding that um, and getting it so it's thin enough um, to allow the uh, motor to go on. Okay, that looks pretty good. I think it will probably go in with that. Let's try it. Oh, 
the bottom bracket looks fine now. We've dremeled that quite a bit. We're still dealing with the head of the screw. Still needs a bit more work. Okay, so that took a lot of dremeling. <laughs> um, I've, I've ended up with half the bracket left because the, the other runner was for the other cables. So I've taken that off. And then I've um, countersunk this hole a bit and found a countersunk screw that fits in perfect. So I'm hoping this is going to do it. I did, when I bought this kit, I watched a couple of YouTube videos and this was what looked like the most complicated bit of getting this kit to fit was this bottom bracket. I'm hoping this is going to help. And let's see if that fits now. Please fit, please fit. Maybe it'll just tighten up okay there. Right, I'm gonna reassemble this case and then we'll uh we'll see if we can tighten it up. Okay, so we've got the case back on. Um, it does seem to move closer when it's up there and then slip out when it's down there. So it does look like there's something still fouling on it. But I'm hoping it's gonna tighten up okay. So what we're looking to do is put this set of brackets on next. This, is, this bit holds the back um, so it's taut, so the motor's not moving around. Um, so this needs to be screwed into the motor and then this needs to go through the centerpiece of the frame um, to hold it in place. And then this bit um, tightens the crank up to um, up to the, um, the frame. Uh, so we've got to get that on as well. bit I've got to put on is this bit. Now there are some spacers that go in between here so you've got to decide on which spacers to use if any depending on the size of your crank. So I'm going to go with uh, these spacers. So I've managed to screw the bracket on um, and the next thing to screw on is this. What I haven't done is tightened up the back yet. So I guess that'll be the next step after I've put this on. So I want to finish the crank first with the kit. So this um, will allow you to screw it tight. I think we've supplied this particular tool because it's thin there, which gives clearance around the motor. So we've just about tightened this up and then we'll be ready for putting the bottom bracket on. Okay, so the next part is to tighten up this. There's a bracket at the back that goes in between these two forks. Um, and it just needs tightening up to make sure the motor can't move when it's putting on power. Okay, that's about as tight as it's gonna get. So I'm pretty happy with that. I think that's pretty secure. So that's the motor now on. Now we've got um, some cables to do um, once going to be to the battery, one's going to be to a sensor and the other one's going to be um, to the control panel on the, on the, on the handlebars. And I would imagine we're going to attach this one 
around there. Um, so that's for the sensor on the wheel. So I'll get the uh, I'll get the sensor and we'll put that one on next. I think so. That's going to be the easiest one to do first. Then we'll have to look at routing how we're going to route this and this one up to the battery and the. That was a battery and that was a control panel. So you may notice that I've completely disassembled um, the motor again. Now, what I'd initially planned was for the cable to go underneath in between the motor. And it would appear that that is not going to work really. Um, every time I tightened up the motor, it jammed this cable. Um, on, on the piece of plastic that was was meant to be the runner uh, that we sanded down. So this this tiny little thing that we I've, I've sanded down as far as I can really was still getting jammed, and so it was stopping the uh, the derailleur from working. Um, so the plan is um, to sleeve this with an outer um, and have it running outside of the motor parameter. Um, what that does mean is that you don't need to take this off um, and potentially void your warranty. So I would leave that on um, and that will allow you to slide it directly on um, and put it back together. So I'm going to put this back together with that on the outside and then I'm going to nip to the uh, uh, cycle shop and get a, an outer sleeve um, for the gear cable um, so it can run with nothing underneath. So it's where, worth bearing in mind that you probably won't be able to run with something underneath there because the gap is really small and it gets smaller the, the more you tighten the motor up. Okay, talk to you soon. So um, I've managed to reattach the motor. I've put the bracket on the back and um, um, used that special spanner that came with it and tightened that up as best I can. So what you don't want is this rocking about um, so it's really important you tighten it as tight as, as you can. It says 40 Newton meters in terms of hand tightness. I don't know what that is, um, but I've just made sure it's it's rock solid and it can't move around. Um, because obviously as you're putting pressure on the pedals, um, there's the potential for the, the whole motor to move around and you don't want that to happen. All right, the next stage is uh, while we're down here, um, I think we should attach the sensor. Um, this goes on the um, the, the wheel. Um, so this attaches to the frame um, with a couple of tie wraps and then there's a magnet that goes on the wheel um, and it, it senses revolutions basically. In the actual um, computer you can set the size of the wheel um, so in there you, you set how big your wheel is um, and, it, and it'll, it'll make sure that it reaches the maximum speed um, that the motor is um, allowed to um, based on the computer settings, uh, which is 15.5 miles an hour. So what you don't want to do is um, kink this cable too much. Um, so it, I've connected it up there. This is the sensor. It needs to go on there. So I've got a lot to play with here. Um, so what I'm going to do is um, wrap it um, and try and find a good um, place for that connector to go, but also for the sensor to go. Um, that isn't going to kink the cable too much. So I think that's good. So I've wrapped it, wrapped it round there, back round, and then I'll tie wrap all of this on uh, to make sure it's nice and steady. So these are the two tie wraps that come with it. I suggest you buy some more because there's going to be plenty of cables, uh, including the new gear cable um, outer sheath that you're going to have to attach to the, the bike some way. You want to make it as neat as possible and make sure nothing can get in the way of the wheels or the, or the motor. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to feed these cable ties in. And you also want to make sure it doesn't get in the way of the wheel when the wheel's turning. It's quite bulky actually, it sticks out quite a lot into the wheel. Um, uh, cavity so 
just make sure that it all turns freely and you've got room for the magnet. So that's quite good. I've actually managed to put the sensor on, but also attach the cable ties to, to where the connector goes. So it's held both sides of the connector in. So now I'll clip them off. And what I might do is add an extra cable tie uh, to this back end to try and stop it so it doesn't um, kink. And it also stops it getting in the way of the, the wheel when I'm pedalling. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. So the next two cables are... This is for the computer, and I'm going to route it through the little hole next to the device that's um, the, the clamp. There's a little hole in the back of the, it'll keep it out of the way of the pedals. And then this is the cable for the battery. So the next stage is to add the battery. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to take the, um, the cage off. Um, and then attach the battery.